Okay, so uh, Kirk's obviously from the university, but also I'm from the port, and what I always do is I'm just going to go through sort of like what my day looks like a little bit. Um, not as quite as thrilling as Kirk's because we have a little bit of a perimeter uh, versus the bump in the internet, which is the U, okay? But the fact of the matter is, is if you think about it, the port, we manage the seaport, we manage the airport. What are the targets nowadays? I mean, you know, TSA is going crazy over gels and liquids and everything else, okay? The airport is a target. The seaport is a target. We had Terminal 18 a couple of weeks ago where there was a container that frankly set off the dogs and the radar, I mean, the uh, radiation detectors. I mean, that was a pretty scary moment for a lot of us because we just didn't know what it was and it was coming here from Pakistan, okay? It was uh, rags. I mean, it was really bizarre and it was actually rags that had been processed in Pakistan and were coming back here. But the thing is, is we still hadn't figured it out because they weigh it and they take when a look he, at it. When you said the dogs were set off, you didn't even blow up, they, they started barking. Yeah, they did. <laughs> So this is kind of like my, this is part of my job description. And it's, uh, it's very eclectic from standpoint, but also this causes me to basically, every time I look at something in my email, immediately I'm just like, you know, thinking through my list as well as Kirk's list. So information and computer security, and there is a difference. There's a huge difference. Right now uh, I can go through and look at somebody's, uh, you know, wastebasket, or right now we're moving a facility at the airport and I looked in their dumpster they have for all these papers and I, I just kept on looking going, I just, I don't want to look. I'm so afraid I'm going to put my hand in there and pull out a contract or pull out some document. But that's the way I'm thinking. That's the, what I always try and do. That's a protection issue. Because Danger Jim Foreman and all these guys at King and everybody else, they do the same thing. But they're looking for ways to knock us down, to, to hurt our reputation. Business continuity, continuity of operations or COOP, it's a new phrase. Disaster recovery planning. Uh, I know Kirk doesn't is lucky here at the at the uh, U because he doesn't have this as a as a yoke. But I've got a huge yoke here trying to basically work on this. Lots of really exciting work. There's plenty of inter interesting issues. But what happens is when I do these two things in particular, as I become the paid professional paranoid, and I sit there and tell my boss, and I say, let me tell you what I'm worried about today when it comes to business continuity. What do we do if? What do we do when? What do we do if this happens? What do we do if we have to evacuate Pier 69? I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's got nothing to do with computer security, but it's basically part of this role. And then I've got to think about all these documents and all this information. What do we do with it? Privacy issues, huge deal, getting bigger all the time. And especially, I have an interesting challenge at the, at the port because people are saying, well, gee, I work for the Port of Seattle. We're a government agency. If they have a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request against us, it's simple. We just give them everything. I said, time out. You don't give them my social security number. Okay, I'm not going to let you do that. You don't give them my credit card number. I'm not going to let you do that. Oh, gee, I never thought of that. So that's the kind of mindset culturally you have to kind of like massage and get down. Critical infrastructure protection policy, especially with the airport and the seaport, lots of discussion, and we are a very big player here in the Puget Sound region, the Pacific Northwest. And then one that I've inherited uh, since I've been there for about almost three years is emergency communications. This is above and beyond 800 megahertz handheld radios. This is into the next phase above that. And it's really, really interesting stuff. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. But again, you're sitting there going, how can I ensure confidentiality, Integrity, availability. How do I make sure I can sustain that? Now, this is not, I'm not going to go read all this to you, but this is sort of a sampling of my filing cabinet, okay? And you'll have a chance to look at this, but kind of like a different way of how I look at my days. Administration, classic administration. Budgets, I don't know why I put that there. I don't have one. Forget yeah. about that, yeah. Uh, audits, you know, we have Steloit, the state, other people coming to visit us. Policies and procedures. All sorts of activity, cell phone disposal, aha, let's worry about that. Uh, responding to the state law, security management. I have a security strategy, and I'd highly recommend that you take a good hard look at this wherever you go back to work or where you're working now. Get a strategy in place. You will find it extremely helpful later on when you're trying to sit there and go, gosh, I'm overreacting or am I underreacting? How does this fit? And Kirk's actually got a really nice list here towards the end of the of this talk. I keep a top 10 list. I try and maintain metrics in a dashboard to show off to management you know, what our temperature is today. I'm on a whole bunch of different committees. Uh, I'm on, for emergency communications, I talked about that. Technology issues, even though it's 
not first and foremost, I am actively involved in almost all these selections as far as we're going to change our firewall vendor, we're going to change our antivirus, what are we going to do here? We're bringing in new trios, blackberries, and PDAs, what do we do about that? And um, it's been interesting, the longer I get there, the more I'm asked for my opinion. That's the great news, but on the other hand, it just takes my day and extend it another four hours maybe, or my end basket. Employee awareness, a huge issue, first line of defense. I try and do brown bags. I did a brown bag this week on uh, cybercrime. And uh, was really interesting, some of the feedback, because I was afraid it was a little bit too high over people's heads. But there were some great questions coming back about how they've seen issues at home and issues at work that I hadn't even been aware of. And then business continuity. And then one thing Kirk and I talked about is almost like, well, what do we attribute a lot of our success to? And part of it is reading. I mean, we both read like crazy. In fact, Barb, I forgot to bring tonight, but I'm going to give you a list of all the websites I subscribe to that are security related for you guys to take a look at. Uh, I mean, I probably get like 10 or 11 emails a day that are subscription-based security, business continuity stuff. But it's really good because you saw the rate of change on the attack vectors every day is different. I mean, yesterday, Microsoft announces this new patch for this was a VML uh, flaw. And when did we start talking about VML flaw? About a week ago, I think. So it's just boom. And once you saw the patch, I'm on top of our patching people saying, what are you doing about it? Are you getting out? Are we taking care of this? It's, it's like you've you got to stay on top of the reading. And if you don't like to read, you might be in the wrong job, especially for this class.